morning everybody how are we all doing it is Wednesday morning and we are just leaving Tilbury Docks it is half past two in the morning too bloody early <coughs> but I need an early finish today so sometimes you've got to do these sort of stuff Unfortunately, I do need diesel, so I'm going to go stop and get some diesel before we head off. Um, heading up to Whist Beach. Now, today's video, I've already recorded, so this is why I'm kind of doing it like a backwards introduction. Because I didn't realise I was going to make the video until I made the video, if that makes sense. So, <clears throat> it's about sat navs and <laughs> how they can really you up big time like they did to me the other day so yeah <laughs> stay tuned and be prepared to uh, discover why and you probably already know most of you why you should not solely rely on sat navs this sat-nav I've got has been a good, <coughs> excuse me, has been a good piece of equipment for a while. It hasn't really done me wrong, but I wasn't going very far. I was only going up to London. So, yeah, local into London, basically, a lot of where I went, I kind of knew the areas, which obviously meant I could kind of use it more as a reference than an actual sort of gospel. Although he's got the same lights as me. Um, so yeah, I um, got a little bit lost. Well, no, I didn't get lost. It just turned me off and uh, yeah, no, I did get kind of lost. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Um, so yeah, anyway, check it out and uh, I'll catch up with you guys in a bit because I'm tired and I'm waffling. I've got to admit, I do love a bit of London. <laughs> so, I haven't been to London since I started this new job, this is the first time I'm going back into London. It's only Tottenham, so it's not, it's not like central London, like Battersea or any of those places I used to go. However, I don't miss it, not one slight bit. Let me show you for a while. Yeah. This is not even in London, this is... Um, just literally past Farrock, so we're coming up to uh, what's it called? <sighs> Raynham? Raynham? Yeah, just coming up to Raynham. So, yeah, this is going to be pretty much all the way down to the parking flyover. If you haven't got a clue what I'm talking about, don't worry, but yeah, for quite a long way. And then it starts to get a little bit better. So hopefully, yeah, it should, it should be too bad. Anyway, I'll catch up with you guys when we're a little bit further along. See you in a sec. Hello everybody, welcome back. We are here. It's nice and tight. Got to be very careful. I need to go around to the right, but I don't know if that lorry is going to be hindering me or not. I think he is. Yeah. And where that lorry is. I need to turn right just in front of him. Wait, 
yeah, I didn't go past. If in doubt, get out. Hopefully, should be able to get round here now. Radio off. It's gonna be tight. Okay, so that, look at that. Sure that it can be done. Jesus Christ. Take a nice and slow. Very close to the bins. And now you're in my way. Gonna get round there with that car there. Is that yours? This car. Fuck you now. Whose car that is? a joke of a place. And this is the joys of London. There we go. Got around the bench there. I'm going to pull over here to let all these lovely people pass. Find out where I've got to go. Okay, I can see it straight out there. Is there anywhere to park? That is the question. Be right back, guys. I'm gonna go find out if I can get down there and park or whatever. <sighs> Damn, it is cold. So we are here. There's two lorries in front. Uh, I've got to illegally park, which is not ideal, but it is what it is. I'm here, so if anyone needs to get past, I can move, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it's gonna be a long tip, apparently. It's gonna be about a three to four hour tip. So um, I'm gonna have to get comfortable. Anyway, we'll catch up with you guys in a minute and show you probably getting out of here. So by the time I see you, uh, it'll probably be afternoon. <laughs> So, catch you in a bit, guys. Right, guys, we are leaving Tottingham. Don't know how to get out of here. Just gonna wing it. Hopefully not get stuck. Very tight, very bumpy. had a container full of charcoal. God, this looks fun. And this place is just lovely. Mind the gap. What gap? <laughs> And another one. And these cars all sticking out like that. Look. Look at that. Jesus. Try not to 
take the bloody edges of them off. It's ridiculous. My swing don't touch that car, but again, how am I going to get around now? I didn't hit it. That's the main thing. Oh, blimey. Literally. Who the hell is Margaret, you may ask? Well, Margaret is my sat-nav. Why do I call her Margaret? Because she took me on a wild goose chase again. And it's like, you know those old couples that they just go out on a, on a Sunday morning and they just go for a drive. And they're not particularly going anywhere. Um, or maybe they have got a destination, but they'll take the longest route just to go look at some scenery. That's what my sat-nav tries to do to me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so from now on she is known as Margaret. Let me explain. So I was on my way up to Gainsborough. Travelling along up the A1. Toddling, toddling, toddling. And all of a sudden it goes to bring me off the A1. So it's early in the morning, I'm half asleep. Trusting, trusting Margaret knows where she's going. And then she brings me off. And it's not till too late I realise, hang about, I've still got 70 odd miles to go until I'm anywhere near here. My destination, why is it bringing me off the A1 so soon? Oh, because Margaret wanted to go for a little village tour. She wanted to bring me all the way through these villages and all the way up through these country lanes up to Gainsborough for 70 miles. 70 miles. Yeah, I wasn't impressed. Uh, so I managed to pull over, have a look on Google Maps, and navigated my way back towards the A1. Ended up coming to a low bridge. Luckily, there was a roundabout to turn around. There were signs, so I didn't make that fatal mistake. And re-navigated my way back to the A1. Got there in the end. I wish I'd filmed it. I didn't. I'm sorry. Um, but was one of those situations where I was half asleep. Didn't even think about filming it, if I'm honest. Uh, so I just thought I'd share it with you guys. So anyway, let me know, guys. Have you had any situation where you sat now was taking you on a wild goose chase? Um, I know people that do nights probably got loads of stories like this because of the road closures and some of the diversions. Yeah, they're not great, are they? Anyway, catch you in a bit.
just going to be mindful and just have a little look at our, just in case there's anywhere else around here. Sorry, I am mumbling. That's what I do when I'm lost. <laughs> Imanox, not there. So the last few times I've done this, it's been pretty stiff, but I have greased it up. Apparently that doesn't make much difference. Let's get the wheel straight. Basically, if it gets stuck, what we got to do is just keep rocking it back and forward, and eventually, fingers crossed, it will go. squashed up. So what we do now is we go and put the handbrake, uh, put the pins locked back in and then we can reverse it. So for those of you that are new and don't know anything about containers, this is what it looks like squashed down. So it's a 20 foot container, you have to squash it down so obviously they can access the back of the uh, container. And um, basically quite a easy principle really. Um, what I'll do is I'll do a more in-depth video of how it works, but basically we've got these pins here. Now you can see that it's 20 foot heavy. So when you collapse it you make sure those pins come back out and stay in place and then you can reverse it onto the bar or in this case down. Uh, then when you're bringing it back out to be a 40 foot uh, then you That's basically it really. So yeah, I'm gonna uh, have a break and then get out of here, nice four hour drive back. So catch you guys.